So about a year and a half ago, I made a couple of videos talking about the best way to make desktop applications in C++. There's this one, this is the OG, basically talking about how I think I'm GUI is a really good choice for a lot of people. But then I kind of took it a little bit further and I made my own kind of application framework called Walnut. I wanted a nice, clean kind of but lightweight platform that you could use to make UI apps for desktop in C++. And I think really this stemmed from us needing to have a launcher so that we could like distribute games with Hazel and have a launcher that like lets you pick your graphic settings and all of that and hit play. I kind of wanted it to look nice, almost like Hazel's UI, but I definitely didn't want it to use Hazel. I didn't want launcher to have Hazel as a dependency because that's just crazy. Imagine having a 3D game engine powering your little launcher. I'm sure some people have done that. So yeah, that's Walnut and it's just available on GitHub for free. Aside from UI stuff, I also wanted to kind of, you know, just build it into a, just a nice useful C++ application framework with just like a useful library. And it's all based on hardware rendering. It uses Vulkan to render all of the graphics, which makes it super graphics-y compatible. So if you're building an application that needs to render graphics on the GPU, then it's kind of a perfect fit. But again, even if you're not, still works. It doesn't quite have the same compatibility as just a native application that wouldn't require, you know, like a, a Vulkan graphics driver, but for most people on decent systems, it works fine. I think Hazel's UI is probably a good indication of my goals for Walnut. Like I'd essentially want to be able to make an app like Hazel's editor in it. More recently, I made an app using Walnut called Walnut Chat. It's like an instant messaging kind of chat application using Walnut Networking, a networking module for Walnut. There's actually a big video all about that. I'll leave it linked up there, networking in C++. Anyway, basically my point is I've been kind of on a roll with Walnut. I've been really enjoying working on it and just extending it, adding features that people have been requesting, kind of taking a lot of the code from Hazel and effectively, I guess, open sourcing it in the form of Walnut and not just UI stuff. Like for example, Hazel's serialization library was put into Walnut so that we could make that Walnut chat kind of application work. But one of the most requested features since the very beginning of Walnut, because that's kind of how I showed it being used, even though it wasn't officially released yet, was custom title bars. So being able to make that launcher that I showed you, how does one make a custom title bar? Lots of people seem to think that Again, that's a limitation of I am GUI. Thus, maybe you should use like a real GUI library or whatever. Now, if you don't know exactly what a custom title bar is, usually native Windows applications look like this. You have this kind of like, you know, title bar. You have like the minimize, maximize, close buttons over there. That's kind of the native look and feel of applications on this operating system, which by the way, in my examples is Windows 11. But lots of applications like to take matters into their own hands. Like Visual Studio, for example, looks like this. Unreal Engine also has this kind of custom look and it just looks really sleek. It just looks really modern. Is there any functional difference really? Well, actually, yeah, there might be because you can position more kind of controls in your actual title bar if you need to. Microsoft Office, for example, has that whole kind of ribbon system and the save icon and stuff is up there. There's an article even talking about how you can achieve stuff like that because it can be quite useful. So can you get that done with I am GUI? Of course. The thing with I am GUI that I still like, this is why I, I just get like, I feel something every time someone says that, oh, you can't do that with I am GUI or, oh, I didn't think that was an I am GUI application. Like, what do you not understand about the fact, <laughs> I'm just getting angry here. Your window is literally a canvas. Like with something like I am GUI, you can control every single pixel that gets rendered within that kind of client area. And since at the end of the day, we use a library like GLFW to actually make the window using like the Win32 API, we can, for example, expand the client area over the title bar. We could also not decorate the window, but I prefer to leave my windows decorated, but we'll talk about that later. The point is, of course it's possible. Is it easy? Well, yes and no. I feel like some things might be easier than you think, but then there's all these edge cases that kind of are annoying. But yeah, obviously it's possible. We've had a custom title bar in Hazel for like years now. Now, this was actually first introduced by Jay. Jay is like our volunteer audio person who wrote the entire audio engine for Hazel. He also really likes UI, so he took the time to actually make this beautiful design that Hazel uses. But anyway, long story short, Walnut now also has this custom title bar. I've taken it from Hazel. I've kind of made it more generic, changed it a little bit so that it's a little bit more kind of native. We'll talk about the details later in this video. It's really as simple as just setting custom title bar to true and that's that's it. So in this video, I'm gonna show you how you can make an application using Walnut that uses this 
custom title bar. And then I'll also go through some of the code of how it actually works and what it takes to make a custom title bar using iMGUI on Windows. And if you wanna just download and play with an application that actually uses this custom title bar and just Walnut in general, then at the moment, Walnut Chat is like, the biggest thing that we have just publicly available that uses Walnut with this kind of new UI and custom title bar. So I'll leave the link to that in the description of this video as well. But be warned, Walnut Chat is a little bit insecure. I'll <laughs> I actually, as of recording this video, the server is up and no one has um, hacked it yet, but I'm expecting someone to hack it any minute. Now, speaking of security though, this video is sponsored by NordPass Business. NordPass Business keeps you and your business's sensitive information secure and accessible. It's basically like a password manager. Plus, plus. Aside from just password stuff, you know, like helping you generate secure passwords, store those secure passwords, check to see if those passwords are part of data breaches, you know, that kind of stuff. Aside from that, NordPass Business is designed to handle all of your company's sensitive information. Like for example, payment information, which by the way, is super helpful in an office environment. Like if someone needs to make a payment, they don't have to look for like a physical card or something. It's all just stored in NordPass. I also really like that you can just store arbitrary pieces of sensitive information. So for example, like a physical lock security code or like the alarm code for the office. Whoever you share it with through NordPass Business, like they'll have access to it and they'll be able to read it. Speaking of sharing though, that's one of the best features of NordPass Business. It's really easy to give people access and take it away. Like for example, if your team changes and, and there's an activity log that you can use to see who's doing what. Check out NordPass Business for yourselves with a generous three month free trial. Just go to nordpass.com slash the churno and use code the churno. Huge thank you to NordPass Business for sponsoring this video. All right, let's take a look at some of this new Walnut stuff. Step one obviously is acquiring this Walnut. Uh, the link to the GitHub repository will be in the description below of course, but it has moved from the churno Walnut to studio churno Walnut. Uh, I think if you still go to the churno Walnut, yeah, it'll just take you to Studio Channel Walnut, so that should be fine. The other really important thing to note though, is as of recording this video though, right now, the new stuff is in the dev branch. And the reason for that is there are still some edge cases that I would like to like fully iron out. I probably could merge this to master in all seriousness. It's very, very stable. And in fact, it's probably better than the current master, but for the time being, it just, yeah, hasn't been merged yet. Okay, so let's open up a command prompt, get clone recursive. We can immediately specify also that we want the dev branch. One other important thing to note though, is that there is also this Walnut app template. You can use this template and that will kind of set up a Walnut app that is somewhat external to the actual Walnut. So that's also a viable way of making a Walnut app. That's probably the preferred way actually. In fact, that's how I made Walnut chat, but the actual Walnut repository does come with an example app, like a little sandbox. So that's also fine. And it's probably a bit easier. You don't have to like use a template or anything. You just clone the repository and you can play with it. Now note that as of now as well, this does actually come with this kind of optional Walnut networking module. Optional in the sense that you can delete it. You don't need it to run Walnut, of course, but that's gonna give it like the networking functionality that was covered in that networking in C++ video and also part of Walnut chat. Okay, cool. So we've got everything checked out. Here's our Walnut folder. Just go to scripts, run setup example project. There we go. Back over here, we now have a Walnut app dot solutions, Visual Studio solution. I know a lot of you want Linux support and I promise you that is on the table. I have, I am planning to do that and I will make a video about it. Okay, so here's Walnut app. Let's just open that up. Well, very big. Um, this example actually has a bit more code. I added some more stuff to it, just like an about dialog box, you know, nothing too fancy, but you will see here that by default in the application specification under the create application function, custom title bar is set to true. That means that if you just run this, so I've just cloned this, I've run the setup scripts, I've opened the Visual Studio solution and I just hit F5, we get this. So here is our Walnut example application. You can see I can, you know, do normal application stuff with it, very exciting. It actually is a little bit exciting when you get all this working because as you'll see in a minute, all of this stuff basically had to be somewhat implemented manually, not all of it though. All of this stuff needed to be considered is kind of what I meant. Um, and then we can of course drag Windows out. You can see that you can't even tell, oh, it's in, uh, now it's not, it's out, that's great. That works as you would expect. Yeah, I don't really know what else to say. Again, normal application stuff, how exciting. And then we have like our menu bar up here, help about, we'll just open this up. And that's kind of the Walnut example. Now, if you set custom title bar to false, then you'll get the exact same thing as you can see, but 
it's going to have that default kind of Windows native title bar. So if this is what you want, of course, you can still do that. In fact, I think false is the default at the moment. I think I might make true the default just because it does kind of look nice. But you can see in the example, we are in fact setting it to true. So if you base your stuff off of this example, then of course you'll get this. We also have this beautiful walnut logo. <laughs> Um, I, yeah, just had some fun in Photoshop. And the only reason really was because I just, I had to put something here. So you would put probably your apps logo or maybe like a button or I don't know what you would do. You'd put something here. So in this case, it's just a walnut image that, yeah, doesn't do anything. In fact, it's part of, um, you know, it's part of this, uh, title bar. So you can move the app with it as well. Um, yeah, other than that, like, yeah, resizing and everything works properly as you, you would expect. I'm just noticing now, actually, that it looks like the client area is a bit too big. You see how that pixel is? This is, this is, this is what it's all about, though. Spoiler alert, this is what it's all about. It's about taking screenshots, putting them into Photoshop, zooming in until you can see, like, the individual pixels, and then aligning everything and playing with it, being like, is that right? Is this not? Using Zoom It, by the way, this is, a lot of people ask me what on earth I use it's called Zoom It. It's like a Sys Internals kind of app. I'll leave a link to it in the description below. This is what I use to draw on the screen and uh, zoom in. It's very useful because again, you know, if I see something, I'm like, oh, that doesn't look quite right. I could just press Control Two uh, and zoom in, and I can immediately see, oh, that pixel's a bit weird. That I feel like that should be a little bit lower or something like that. Okay. Anyway, um, so that's basically the gist of it. Download it, play it. You know, GitHub.com slash studio turner slash walnut. Now I'm going to show you a closer look of, I guess, how it works, um, how I made it happen. We're not going to go too deep because it's tremendously boring. And also I feel like if you're going to implement it or something, you're probably going to want to read the source code and not watch a video, um, but I will cover uh, how it works. So basically at the moment, walnut is very simple. We basically have this application.gui um, file. It's now, there are now two different applications. There's an application headless and an application GUI. Again, that was part of Walnut chat because I needed the server to run using Walnut, but on Linux in a terminal, so headless. So no IAM GUI, no GLFW, no Vulkan, obviously. And that's why we can actually have like a, a, a headless Walnut configuration. I'll probably talk about that in a later video if people are interested. But uh, in this file, we have the whole app at the moment. This I, I really do want to change this, to be honest. I just haven't gotten around to it yet because it's a little bit, it's a little bit messy. In fact, I even have some um, to do's or like some notes that say that like, hey, yeah, like for example, we shouldn't store resources in this application class because then we have to manually release them before we, um, you know, make sure that Vulkan has finished and shut Vulkan down because these resources are kind of, you know, textures on the GPU. So thus they're made using Vulkan and handled by Vulkan. So there's a lot of kind of, uh, you know, I wouldn't look at this class or this file and be like, this is <laughs> this is peak programming by, by Cherno or by anyone really. Um, you know, this is definitely work in progress and uh, I would like to clean it up. Maybe that would be a, a fun kind of video. I don't know. We'll see. But let's talk about the title bar stuff. So the first thing that we do um, is when we initialize the application, we check to see again if that specification custom title bar, which I talked about earlier, if that is enabled, if that's on. And if it is true, then we set glfw title bar to uh, false. So what is glfw title bar? You can see it's added by Hazel. So it's actually not a standard glfw thing. We added that, I believe Jay added that um, to, to our fork of glfw, which uh, if we go over here into, let's go into, this is, this is the Walnut repository. If we go into vendor and then glfw, you'll see this glfw is actually my fork, so the Cherno GLFW is my fork of GLFW with some modifications such as this title bar. So honestly, like if you're a programmer and you're interested in how this is implemented, first of all, feel free to use my branch. It's GLFW with premake, supports Linux as well, by the way. But if you wanna know how it differs from, you know, original GLFW and what we need to do here to get the custom title bar stuff, you know, you can just look at the commits that we made. You can look at the diff between this repository and GLFW. Like that would probably be the best way um, rather than me walking you through all of the Win32 API code that had to go into this. But you can also, you know, search for this inside, not inside this, uh, inside, uh, let's just go to like GLFW. Well, Win32 window is where most of this stuff is. Uh, and then we have this like title bar. Yeah, it's GLFW window hints title bar um, and lots of stuff kind of involving the title bar 
uh, has been kind of modified. So this function over here, for example, this is the main kind of messaging uh, function, right? It's window proc, these are all of the callback. This is basically like all the window events that happen. This is like the callback function uh, for all of those. So they'll basically get put into here. And then for the most part, you know, it's, there are, there are some details into how it's handled, but this is like kind of the type of message it is. And these are all of the different event types. So you can see, for example, when we get to some of the interesting ones that show kind of how this custom title bar stuff is implemented, you know, for example, this one, uh, N, NC calc size. I'm not gonna pretend that I know exactly, I don't even know what NC means to be completely honest. But basically the point of this, I've written these comments here so it makes sense, but the point of these is um, you can see we don't do this first of all if we're using like the default kind of native title bar. Instead, we just break, which uh, essentially means that we go down here and we return the default kind of window procedure. But otherwise, if we are kind of in a custom frame scenario, then we have to, for example, shrink the client area by the border thickness so that we can resize the window and see the borders. So basically what this does is it kind of determines the client area. So the client area is where we can render stuff. And so this, for example, will tell us like the thickness of the borders. Top borders are handled differently, which is another kind of issue that, I don't know, I actually couldn't solve this uh, within the time period that I had. I'm probably gonna keep stabbing it, but what tends to happen is if we do actually take the top border and we kind of try and, you know, we're increasing that. So we're kind of shrinking, um, you know, th these are the rectangle bounds, by the way, not the rectangle size. So when we do plus equals, you know, we're kind of pushing the top boundary kind of down. So in a way, you know, we're, we're shrinking it. If I run this, we get this kind of classic white border that um, I've seen a lot of people online talk about. Uh, yeah, very, very weird. And on Windows 10, it actually draws an additional native, but a weird version of the native kind of um, uh, title bar on top of that, even if you do as little as plus one here. So, and, and, I, and I did note that down. So this is like, honestly, just bizarre. Um, the reason why you'd even wanna do uh, plus one here is because if we look at this, you see that very clear resize mouse button thing. Like when I put my mouse over this, when I hover my mouse over that top border, we see that resize and we can just click it and resize. That doesn't work if you do zero. You can still resize the window, but you'll never see that icon. See, I can't see that icon now. Now I can still, even if I'm a few pixels off actually, I can still click and drag, right? Because I suspect that the way that that's working is there's this other window event called hit test. Um, and this is another juicy one that you have to implement if you have a custom title bar. And that is basically, you have to tell the application, every time the mouse moves, you have to be like, this is where you are in the window, right? So there are basically a few options. There's either I'm in the client area, which is like the main drawing area. That's like the main application area. I'm in the caption, which caption sounds intriguing. What the heck does that mean? Caption is the title bar. That's how Windows calls the title bar. I don't know the history behind that. I don't know why it's called that. No idea. I'm actually kind of interested. I should probably look that up. That would be nice. That way I, I could tell you guys and this, this video here would actually be interesting and informative. But nevertheless, uh, this basically tells us that we're in the title bar and we actually have a custom callback function, which we'll get to in a minute, that is used to determine that. You can see this comment basically explains it. Um, so client area, the title bar area, or we're on a border, right? Which is what this part does. Uh, obviously it doesn't apply if the window is maximized. That doesn't make sense. You can't like resize the window by the borders if the app is maximized. But over here, we just do some really basic math, I guess you go like, it's not really math, but we do some really basic kind of logic here just to see where we are. And then that way we determine like if we're in the top left border, which is like, you know, this corner basically, like are we over here? Um, and then, you know, all of the kind of diagonals, all of the kind of corners, the diagonals, and then also just like the left side or the right side. Um, and the reason why that's important is because that way we can actually click and drag here. So you can see that's the left border. If I just not, if I just don't do this and we never return left, you can see I can't actually do anything now. Yeah, look, I can't resize this on the left side anymore because it never tells me that I'm on left. And so Windows will not kind of let you resize it. Um, so yeah, that's very obviously important. So that's another really important one. Uh, those are kind of like the main ones. Yeah, this title bar hit test is so, so, so important because this is what lets you move the application. And this is like a huge thing. If I get rid of this, let's just set this to um, false. 
Ah, oh, sorry, false. I'm in C, so zero. <laughs> um, then you can see, look, I can't move this thing, man. Yeah, look, I'm clicking, I'm dragging. I can't move my window. I need this to be properly implemented because that tells me that I'm in the, you know, the hit test returns that I'm in the caption, I'm in the title bar, which means that if I click and drag, I should move that. So this is what I mean. Like it's, you can theoretically implement all of these, like you can build this whole system from scratch. Like you can basically say, if I click the mouse and I drag the mouse, then I am supposed to set the window position every frame to the mouse's delta or whatever, right? You can actually do that. I think from memory, the first version that Jay made for Hazel actually did do that, but there is a better way. And that is obviously just using the functionality in the operating system in Windows that makes the stuff happen like for the Windows. And that's exactly what we can do like with this kind of hit test function. So what does this callback do? That is a client side callback, meaning that back in our Walnut code inside application, we actually set that. So hit test, glfw set title by hit test callback, which again is a Hazel function, well, a function from our kind of system. And then all this does is it returns, well, basically outputs this hit variable here. It just calls app is title bar hovered, which returns title bar hovered, which we actually set inside um, the I'm GUI code. So inside the I'm GUI code, UI draw title bar is what actually draws all of that. So we do all the drawings still inside I'm GUI or with I'm GUI rather. You can see like it's all here. Again, if you're interested in this stuff, just read the code. It's on GitHub. No point in me kind of going through explaining this line by line. Um, there are some good kind of debug boundaries that I've added. So for example, if we get this uh, title bar bounds to be active, it will actually, I'll use the invalid prefab color from Hazel, but you can see it kind of draws, uh, you know, these title bar bounds, the top one's a bit cut off there, but this is important because this shows you like which area is the title bar and thus what area can I use to drag the application because the hit test will um, return caption, you know, when we're, when we're within that area, which by the way, how do we do that? Well, we have an invisible button called title bar drag zone and then, title bar hovered is just equal to, is that I'm GUI item hovered, which is that. And that size obviously, which we can, um, we can pop this uh, rectangle in if we wanted to draw it by the way. So there it is. You can see it, it excludes this guy over here, right? It does not include this. By the way, the reason why it's not drawing that top area is because that uh, that client area is cut off. So if I change this to be even like just one pixel to the top, you can see I now see it. But the problem is the reason why I didn't leave it like that is because of Windows 10, it ruins everything. So unless I wanna like run time, you know, figure out what operating system I'm on and then like switch the numbers around. Uh, for now, I'm like, you know, whatever, let's just keep it at zero which means we technically do clip a little bit, um, but, uh, and we don't get, by the way, you can see we don't get that thing. I think I mentioned that earlier, I'm getting tired. Um, uh, but we can still resize everything. Anyway, so that's obviously this kind of debugging stuff is really useful when you're trying to figure this out, but you can kind of see the gist of how this works, right? You have to kind of go through, draw every little piece, um, the, uh, you know, the kind of minimize, maximize slash restore and close buttons as well that you see over here in this kind of top right corner, they're all just, yeah, icons. They're all implemented over here. So you can see here's the minimize button. What does it do if we press it? It queues an event to iconify, which is just like to minimize basically. The maximize button will either, if it's maximized, it'll restore, otherwise it'll maximize. Close button will close the application. That's pretty self-explanatory. And then the, the images, uh, you know, one last thing I'll quickly mention here is that the images are actually embedded, which is really cool because we can ship without external files. Um, and the way that that's done is, uh, well, I just have a little Python script that will take any input kind of file and just uh, generate kind of some C++-ish code of, of it being embedded. So you can see we have um, walnut embed windows, window images embed. And if we go to that, we have a whole bunch of, we basically have these like uint 8t arrays of just bytes basically. And these bytes make up in this case, an actual like compressed PNG image that represents that particular icon. So the idea is I export an image in Photoshop and I, you know, you know what, this is probably good enough for <laughs> to be its own video. Uh, Cause it's quite a useful thing to know. Um, but over here you can see all these images are basically being decoded um, over here because they need to be PNG decoded and then loaded. And then that makes up a Walnut image, which we can then use kind of, you know, for drawing. Um, and that's what happens. So we have to manually go through obviously and draw every button. But again, the benefit, we get full control over this. You want to stick another button? 
you know, you're not satisfied with your classic, you know, minimize, close, whatever buttons. You can, I don't know, you can make a whole row of buttons up here. You could omit some of them. You could change them. You could change the location of them around. You could make it like this. <laughs> Right, like you, or you could be like, you could be like Mac OS and put them on the left side and like, uh, I don't know, make them all red and circles and you know what I mean? Like you could do anything. And that's kind of the, the power here. Uh, and at the moment it's obviously just all implemented in applications. So you technically need to modify Walnut code to put anything there. You know, maybe we'll make some more kind of friendly kind of callbacks or ways to inject code into this so that you could just, uh, you know, do this without modifying Walnut at all, potentially. Um, but yeah, I just think it's a really, really useful thing to have. It obviously looks very nice. It can potentially just make the workflow of the app be more intuitive and just be nicer to use. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please don't forget to hit the like button. If you want to see more Walnut videos, I am happy to sit here and talk about Walnut all day. So please let me know in the comment section below. Don't forget to check out NordPass Business. Just go to nordpass.com slash the churno and use my code the churner. Thanks for watching. I'll see you guys next time. Goodbye.